Uh, this evening, we have two demos for you. We're going to crank this one up right now. Walt Wager is with us. Walt, are you geared up, ready to go? Walt, we don't hear Yeah. You. Uh, can you hear now me? We have you, Walt. Yes. All right. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been listening to all everything that's been going on and uh, uh, thinking about some of your your goals. And I think it's great that uh, you have something like this going where anybody can participate, no cost. And uh, it's, it's a great thing to do. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm going to do tonight, what I've been working on, I think I showed this uh, last week at, at your meeting. Um, I have a friend that gave me some wood. Of course, you know, as a wood turner, you never turn down free wood. Uh, even if you have more than you can use for the rest of your life. You're cutting my head off, Tom, I think. Do you have a cameraman? There we go. Is that better? Yes. Okay. And um, so I, I came up with this idea of a uh, sushi dish because they like sushi. And I'm going to make something for them. And I use PowerPoint to uh, make a template. And I have a uh, overhead camera. I have a, a, a short PowerPoint program to, for the, the uh, beginning part of this. So tonight I'm gonna turn this into a sushi dish, but in order to get ready for that, the PowerPoint will, will show you uh, what I had to do. So Tom, can we put that up, share the screen? Okay, I gotta share the screen with you. Oh, give me one moment. Okay, share screens turned on for you. Uh, no, well, for, for this is for, uh, okay. Tom is working on it. Hold on. I don't think you had a share screen. I think we did. Uh, well, I have to give you a permission. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can get to the PowerPoint. That would be this one. Okay. All right, let's start it, Walt. All right. And uh, Tom's going to forward it as we go along. You, you know where the forward thing is? I do not. Okay, let's see. Uh, give us a second here to figure this out. I will get this to move. Okay, you just press the button. So uh, to start off with, the uh, template that I'm using is on my website if anyone chooses to uh, download it. What are you seeing now? The template load, download, okay. What happened to the uh, PowerPoint? Hold on, we'll get this. All right, we're looking at your PowerPoint now. Are you zooming? Oh, you're through? looking at it? Oh, okay, I don't see it on, the, on my screen. So uh, you, so anyhow, the, uh, on my website, there's a list of things under the video tab. And one of them is the, uh, the uh, sushi template. And okay. if you, uh, if you excuse, want to make the same thing, you can download that. Well, can, gonna... we get your, can we get your cameraman to back up two slides? Press back the other arrow. Slides. I don't know if we can do that. Let's see. Yeah, you, oh, press you know what? Use the left arrow on the keyboard. There we go. No, it didn't move. You're seeing the uh, title slide now? No, sir. We're seeing the drill press slide. Got the slide with the clamps. Pardon? You're on the drill press, drilling the mortise. Oh. Uh, click, click that one up there top. Click that. Can you see it now? No. No change. Okay. We'll, we'll get it. Yeah, we can live through this, Walt. If you want to keep going. Uh, well, we can, one, one sec, let's try this. Come up here and go to slideshow and say... Okay, folks, you tuned in to WorldwideWoodTurners.org and Walt Wager is doing the sushi bowl for us right now. Some technical problems out of his shop. Uh, we're waiting until it's cleared up a little bit. We've got two demos tonight. Um, and Kurt, Kirk Cap will be here with a one on CA finish in a little while. Okay, well, we, we haven't tried this before from here, so uh, I will move on. 
And uh, what I don't know what slide you're seeing, but see the left arrow and the right arrow on the keyboard. Move the slides back and forth. Can we get your website posted on on the uh, chat when you get a chance? Sure. Okay, we're at, we're at the spray down pattern on the board right now. Let's see if that's that's what I did is right. Oh, you got it. Okay, so the yeah the pattern is glued to the board with um, a spray adhesive, uh, 3M. It's an art art adhesive, and I just spray the back of the template and then stick it to the board, and then mm -hmm. go to the next line. Oh, we're going too fast. He's got a touchy finger. That's not moving on our screen. That's the problem. Moving here. There you go. Okay. That's we're, one on the the we're on the bandsaw right. right now. So the so the next one is at the bandsaw. The bandsaw. And the only thing I would say about bandsaw is that uh, if you have a three eighths inch blade, like a woodcutter blade like I have, it's hard to get around corners. So you have to make a number of cuts straight in to the corners where, where um, the uh, smooth curves meet before you try to cut the piece out. Go, okay, next slide. Where's the drill press? Uh, with the drill press, okay. So the only thing about the drill press I would say is do not try to hold, we're, we're drilling a two and one eighth inch hole in the back as a mortise that we're gonna put into the chuck in expansion mode. Uh, if you're doing this with, on a drill press with a uh, Fosner bit, uh, make sure you clamp that down because you cannot hold it if it grabs, believe me. Next. All right, so uh, now I think the next one is uh, showing the... Uh, We're looking at the face of the template while you have it mounted on a, on a chuck. Right, on the lathe, okay. Time to make some shavings. I think that's something that Eddie says, right? Yep. <laughs> Occasionally. <laughs> All right. So we can go live now. We get out of the, uh, we'll see if we can get out of the PowerPoint back to a live show. Are you seeing this now on me on the, uh, on the lathe? Yes, sir. I just stopped at the share. So you're up. Okay. Uh, can we get this, get this camera here? Looking at overhead and the chuck in a, in a block. Right. Is I'm trying to get, we're going to go to the uh, tailstock camera so you can see the front of it. So basically what I've done is uh, just take that, that hole that I drilled with the drill press, put it on the lathe in expansion mode, and I'm, I'm getting ready to turn. I get my uh, face shield on. Thank you. I'm using a, uh, a spindle gouge. And what I'm going to do is to start out here, there's a, there's a circle in the middle. I'm going to leave this as called the plate. This is the part here that the, uh, the food would be on. And the rest of it, I'm carving away. Okay, to make it, uh, give it a profile in a foot. And for safety reasons, I can move this. There we go. For safety reasons, I suggest when you can bring up the uh, tail stock. And I do this at home on when I'm making these, I'm making it on a small little um, 12 inch jet lay. This is Tom Slay, beautiful, robust. You know what, if you like it, well, you can take it home with you. <laughs> I couldn't get out of here with it, I'm sure. Well, we can distract them. <laughs> hey, Walt. Uh, yeah. Why would you use a spindle gouge instead of a bowl gouge? Um, well, I'll show you that. I mean, it, it, to me, the, the spindle gouge has a, a longer, um, on mine anyhow, a, a longer uh, cutting edge uh, uh, and it's shallow, so I can just roll gouge. Um, there's no, nothing, but the other, other part of it is that I'm going to be doing other things in here that require a spindle gouge, like putting a bead on here. So 
I'm going to start it up, I think. Yeah. I can figure out how to make it go. And uh, at home, I, I, I turn about 1500 RPM. Uh, I'm not crazy about going up to 2000, but 1500 is fast enough. I don't know what the speed is on this lathe, but we're going to go for it. So I just put the spindle gouge up here at an angle about 11 o'clock toward the, toward the end. Well, for some reason, you're if you're doing a commentary right now, it's being overridden by your your camera. We don't hear you. And that that will taper it out. And I want to come down to about half half the uh, width of the board. This is a, a nominally one inch board. For those of you watching this that are interested in doing a demonstration with the organization, um, if you're using a, a digital camera or camcorder, there would be a um, override on the microphone. And if you turn it off, then you'll hear all the sound that comes off the work. Otherwise, it's going to eliminate the highs and lows of chatter, noise, and the cutting. Is this something we can do, you're saying? Uh, well, it can be done with some camcorders. Um, it's an automatic built-in device to make home movies nicer. We're okay. If you do your commentary when okay. the lake isn't running, we're well, you, great. You, you can see that there's some profile coming along on the on the top edge. And what I'm going to do is now put the uh, <coughs> make, make the dish in the center. And for that, I'm going to, first of all, just kind of take this stuff off. So I can look and see how it's coming. This is a piece of uh, maple, actually. It's two pieces of maple that have been glued together. So the board's been glued in the middle, as you can, you might be able to see when I when I take it off. But I'm gonna try to make a couple passes in here and get this smoother and coming out here. And I found that using a negative brake scraper, Negative brake scraper on this works works pretty well. And I've seen Rudy Lopez do this, so uh, that's where I got the idea. Yeah, it's not not bad. It's a little bit of tear out here, but I'll I'll do it again. Then I'm going to move this back. Just check to make sure this is secure in here. And I'll take the finish off this um, dish. You're rubbing the bevel on that cut, correct? Excuse me? You're rubbing the bevel on that cut? Yeah, as much as I can. Yeah, to get a good clean peel. Right.
And I just want to feel it so it's no big lumps or bumps or anything going through the middle. And that seems pretty good. The other thing that I found is that the, um, uh, I have a little round negative rate scraper too. And sometimes I can come in here and clean this up so that I hardly have to sand. Depends on the wood, a lot depends on the wood. Okay, that looks fair, fair, fair enough. And I'll just spend a little more time trying to use the negative ray scraper, the square one out here, the flat one, I should say, uh, coming in here and cleaning up this piece. Not bad. Now, normally I would sand this, and then only one thing to say about sanding. Uh, because this is sticking out here like this, and you have pieces that you can't see, uh, you you can do. You're going to have to do some sanding. It seems to me off of a, a lathe. But I could take one. I'll start with uh, 180 here, and have a piece of, of foam rubber that I put the sandpaper around I don't want to slow it down because I don't want to otherwise I can't just stay on the outside of that Dave, if you can hear me, the sanding overrides the microphone, so uh, we don't hear any comment that your commentary is right now. The sanding overrides the microphone. Yes. Part of it might be because of the uh, face shield. No, no, sir. It's the, it, the 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 chip on the camera takes out the highs and lows to make it a clearer sound for home movies. So. There's some uh, figure in this wood. It looks like there's a uh, branch coming into it or something. So as, as I said, it's going to take some sanding off the lathe anyhow. And when I generally do that, I'll use um, one of these Harbor Freight sanders uh, uh, angle grills and just, just go around the, the piece like this. I'm not going to do a lot of sanding tonight just to say Tom from cleaning up a lot of dust. So that, that would be the front of, or the top of the dish. Now I have to turn the bottom. In order to do that, I have a, uh, platter basically with a tenon with a piece of leather on it. Hey Ronnie, they took one of your old belts and cut it up. Look. <laughs> I'm enjoying this uh, this demo. Hey Ron. Very good. Good nice. to hear from you. Ron was one of our demos up here when we had King Arthur Tools going. It's closed down now uh, because of the COVID virus and everything that went on. Walt, you don't, 
you're using that pad oversized to your bowl. Excuse me. That pad is oversized to rim on a bowl. Yes. Pad is, okay. All right. Yes, the pad. So it's not acting like a jam chuck or a modified jam no, chuck. No, no, it's strictly friction. Okay. I might have missed that. That's a nifty trick. It, well, it's not strictly friction. There's the um, one of the things that the uh, Fosner bit does for you is leaves a hole in the bottom. You have to be a little bit aware of that because uh, otherwise, if you cut the bottom, if you cut the top too thick, you're likely to have a hole through the whole thing. Later on, I filled that hole, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. But right now, I'm just using a, um, a live center that captures it like that. And I'm going to come back and do, basically do the same thing on this side that I did on the other side. I'm going to, I'm going to start shaping the uh, uh, profile. That fish already has an eye on the other side. Excuse me? So that fish already has an eye on the back side. If you yeah, sometimes it, we're, the it, eye's it, already there. It's, it's really funny. I'll show you some of the finished ones later, but uh, yeah, that one's got an eye right there. Yeah, but if you flip it over, there's one on the back side. That's true. Nice eye, John Arani. <laughs> you missed that one. I don't even know how you can even. I don't even how no, you can see that on the TV, but anyhow. Yeah, it's on the wrong side of the. Oh well, we'll deal with it. It's coming and going. That's the deal. Is that in there like that? Well, there's a whole lot of folks liking that leather pad idea. See how we're looking. Okay, I'm a little torn out piece on the foot here, but I think I can get that out of there. Actually, I think that was a part of the original uh, wood. It was already torn up in the back here. And it'd be no specific height for that lip. It just has to be a lip off the base so it sits on the table smooth. Pardon? This would, this would make a great Christmas gift. What I was saying, Walt, is there's no specific height on that lip. It just has to be a lip so it sits on the table flat. Right. So it's, yeah, so it's, that's right, exactly. And where I'm going to try it now, what I'm working on now is to get the thickness down to a point where it's a reasonable dish. I don't want it to be an inch thick up here. I want it to be down so that it's about uh, oh, uh, uh, an eighth to three sixteenths of an inch. Folks, if you're just tuning in, we're having a little audio output problem from Walt. 
but he tells us late right now. If you get an overhead shot, maybe you can see the, uh, the profile developing. You can see the thickness coming down. You have to be careful because when you're coming out as the tail, of course, it doesn't take long before to take, it takes less time to take this off than it does take off this piece in the middle here. And you can get it, you can get it too thin real fast. Don't ask me how I know that. You read it in a book. Good so, shavings coming off of there. Pardon? Nice he's slicing it off. That's what he's doing. He's getting there. Well, you also have to make sure that when you're finished, the tail is not resting on the table. It's got to be above that. Oh, level. right, right. Well, it, yeah, it won't be. <laughs> hey, you can see that in the overhead shot. <laughs> I'll switch to the uh, paper. Still, still a little thick. Sometimes what I have to do is just kind of say, well, this is the this is the part I want to be thinner right in here. So just kind of make a uh, mark or let let myself know that that's where it has to be. <clears throat> Coming a little bit of cleanup with the scraper. <clears throat> And I'm going to leave it, leave it at that for now. And then I'm going to go to the next stage, which is cleaning up the edges. And again, I would sand this as much as I can with the rubber, the uh, rubber pan and the paper uh, before I go to the next stage, but I'm going to just move on. And what I've made 
is a so jig with some Velcro on the end of it to hold a three inch piece of sandpaper. I move that up there like that. And how about tail stock sh shot? Tail stock shot. There we go. Okay. And now for this, I slow the speed down. Then you can just come around like this. You don't need a fancy reciprocal sander or anything like that. You have to remember this side's coming up. <laughs> and I just knocked the uh, corners off. Uh, Gordon's asking how thick the wood was, and Walt has said it was a one inch piece. One inch. Well, you can do it with three quarters. I've, I've, I've done some with uh, standard three quarters. You just have to be a little bit careful on the back when you make the hole for the mortise, or you can always make a tenon. And I use a glue block and put it on a tenon, and that way you won't have a problem with the poison bit going through the through the front. There's many, many ways to do this. Tim Hatch from Texas says he can see the sushi bowl idea being used for other applications like animal shapes for a kid's dinner plates. Oh, you want to talk about animal shapes like, like a chicken sushi? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim, there's no grass grows under his feet. My, uh, my daughter uh, was visiting when I was making these things and she, she raises chickens. She, she said, well, make a chicken sushi dish. I said, well, I've never had chicken sushi, but I can make the dish. And then I thought, well, maybe we should do something for the... Hey, hey Walt, can you put that chicken back up again? It's heading that way, Tim. And then what about cat lovers? They deserve a dish too, don't they? Yeah. There you go. So it's all, it's all done the same way. It's just a little platter, a little dish with uh, some carving and some, some uh, decoration. <clears throat> the decoration. Oh, that, Walt, that we need to get back to so the template info. 
What's Say that? again, Ronnie. We need to get back to the template information so we can uh, download it. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> just waltwager.com is my website. And uh, under the video tab, there's all the videos. There's a whole video of this. Uh, there, and uh, right next to that video, it's at the very bottom. Uh, there's a Word document that you can download. It's the template for the fish. The uh, I have a, a template for the chicken too, but I haven't got it online. I guess I could put it up there if anybody's interested in chicken. <laughs> well, we got we got a request from Billy. He went Billy. He wants a rat shape one to make a cheese board out of. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's a great idea. Um, I want a bird shaped one. <laughs> ducks is two ducks. Um, as as far as the decoration. Uh, one of the things that I use, if I if I can find where I put it, there's a there's a uh, oh here it is I got it. It's called ink tents. They're watercolor pencils, and you can draw on the wood, and then you 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 can wet it. Let me see if I can get this so you can see it. You can wet it and the uh, watercolors come out and, and blend. And then you can uh, coat it with whatever finish that you want. Now, I did a little research on food safe finishes. And everybody says that um, the oils like uh, polyurethane and uh, tongue oil and all these, when they, when they set, they're completely food safe. But there's no FDA approval on any of that stuff. The only thing you get FDA approval on is epoxies, like uh, Lumilite. And I've tried doing some, uh, making some of these with Lumilite as the coating. And it's very difficult to get a very smooth coating all the way around the uh, edges. There was a uh, turner in Washington named David Lorry, who made some, uh, used to make salad bowls, mostly salad bowls. And he finished them all with an epoxy and, and they're just an absolutely gorgeous, beautiful finish. No bumps, no lumps or anything. And I've, I've tried to get a hold of him to find out. To spin it. What's that? You have to spin it with the spin it? epoxy on it. You have to let the epoxy dry while it's spinning very slowly. Well, it, it, it takes 24 hours to, well, it doesn't take 24 hours to start the set. But the problem I would think would be that as, as it's spinning, it's going to spin it out on the outer edges. I haven't tried that. Maybe I'm going to have to try something uh, in order to try to uh, get away with. I do it on a rotisserie motor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that definitely might work. My, thick, my uh, little 12 inch lathe goes pretty slow. So I can if try it. If you get down to six RPM, it'll work. <laughs> what? If you can get down to six RPM, it'll work. <laughs> Is that right? Well, uh, that's, that's what I'll, I'll try next. But the Lumilite makes a couple different epoxies. And the one that I've been using is a uh, craft store epoxy called Amazing casting resin uh, or amazing art resin. And a number of the artists that do um, things like uh, dirty pour, liquid pour, where they pour the acrylics over the surface and uh, let it fly out, uh, they use uh, an artist's resin uh, on a flat surface. The problem here is we've got these cup surfaces and most of those epoxies are self-leveling so you get a thicker, much thicker coat in the center than you do on, on any other edges. Um, if anybody has any, any experience with epoxy and um, knows a better way to do it, please let me know. Uh, so that's what I'm struggling with now is, is basically I'm trying to finish them with epoxy. Um, and as far as food safe goes with 30, 3804 or 3408, whatever it is, uh, so I, uh, uh, CA glue, I guess that's the next presentation. 
I asked Marc Soleil, who sells this stuff, if it's food safe. And he said, yeah, when it dries, it's, it's a solid acrylic and it's food safe. He said, but don't, let, don't write that down that I said that. <laughs> so, so there you have it. Uh, nobody wants to take responsibility for what actually is food safe. Walt, this has been a fantastic demonstration, sir. We very much appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. I, I um, hope that if, if, if you all try it, you'll send me an email and show me what you got.